Yo, what's up, team? Welcome back to J3 Entertainment. You guys know what time it is. It's reaction time, y'all. Yes, it is, gentlemen. And we're about to react to something that I think that's very close to all our hearts. Oh, yeah. Yeah, man. What we react to today, bro? Screw Attack, Optimus Prime versus Gundam. Oh, sound. <laughs> robot <laughs> on a robot. Guys, let's go. <laughs> hey, bro. Transformers G1 versus man. what? Versus Gundam. Gundam. And, Mobile suit. And yes. straight up, this sounds like the original Gundam piloted by my boy Armor Ray. So, okay, man, okay. let's see what they talking about. Bro, you guys know that I'm already about to go with uh, a Transformer, man. Okay. Over to Gundam. All oh, right. it's I'm gonna, a, I'm a, I, I want to hear the breakdown. Yeah. But already, I'm right. going with. Oh, I'm going with Optimus. Already made. Okay. So, I'm going with Optimus. so prediction, you're going Optimus. I'm going Optimus because Optimus is an organic being, bro. Not a not a human controlling a suit. Okay. Yeah. That and that's sense. why I'm going with Optimus too. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm just saying. Because yeah. for for all all of Armoro's ability, he's human. And, he's and, and, and that split second. And that yeah, that yeah, reaction time for the suit. So it's still human to a degree. Yeah. But Ronan is always the oddball. That's so true. I, I I assume Gundam. you're going Gundam. Yeah. All right. I mean, somebody got to support him. I mean, the Gundam got. <laughs> this I mean. Guy. The Gundam got a lightsaber, right? Pretty much, bro. True, <laughs> true that. True. But Optimus got a cannon. I, yeah. And so does the Gundam. And it's organic, so. And so does the Gundam. And I'm pre yeah. pretty sure he got missiles, But it takes time for him to call that. He just automatically, you know, I don't know. But let's go. <laughs> that said, let's get into this reaction. Put let's, these headphones on, y'all. You know, they robots in disguise. He might be a Gundam. <laughs> bro, you thought, you thought you had me. It's Crush possible. him from inside. It can happen, right? Sam, I have uh -huh. a confession to make. <laughs> I'm not all the way organic. <laughs> all right. You guys ready? Yeah. Yep. Let's go ahead and get into this reaction, y'all. There we go. Across this vast world of different <laughs> nations with different people, it is the clash of opinions which truly divides us. However, there is one universal truth which absolutely everyone can agree on. Giant robots are <laughs> freaking awesome! Yes, like Optimus Sipping Prime, real. the original G1 Transformer. And the RX-78-2, the oh, original mobile suit it. gun. There it is. I These aren't it. just any robots. They're the old school Taking classics. Taking it back to the 80s, the baby. The worst of their kind. And we're in for a robo battle of East versus West. Well, Optimus <laughs> was originally a Japanese toy. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win Ooh. a death I like this. Yeah, man. Fight on the moon. Millions of years ago, on a distant planet called Cybertron, a great unrest grew between two factions of robotic beings, the Decepticons and the Autobots. With little warning, they found themselves entangled in civil war. Led by that douchebag Megatron, the Decepticons started gunning down any bot they pleased for basically no reason, including some guy named Orion Pax, which will be important later. Damn. Rest in peace, Robro. What Megatron didn't know was that this seemingly random encounter would end up reshaping the universe. Thanks to a robot Gandalf, Orion Pax was rebuilt into something bigger, stronger, and way more recognizable. The newest commander of the Autobots had risen, Optimus Prime. The Autobots? I didn't know that. <laughs> sacrifice freedom. Optimus is a powerful warrior with tons of three awesome player game? robo powers. Uh, As a Transformer, yep. he can scan nearby objects and morph his body to resemble one, becoming a robot in disguise. His favorite is a classic 1979 Kenworth K100 tractor. Uh -huh. An oldie but a goodie which sports 500 horsepower and can book it over 80 miles per hour. He even gets a trailer which, when he doesn't need it, mysteriously disappears into thin air. <laughs> no, really, where the hell does that thing go? I need to know. More importantly, the life force of every Transformer resides in their spark, sort of like a soul. And Optimus is no different, except that his spark gives him a few unique abilities. Here we go. Yeah, his spark's pretty rare. Here's that Compared breakdown. Compared to other Robo people, it gives him increased yeah, strength, kind of speed, and durability. He can shoot laser beams from his hands, fly with either a jetpack or his feet boosters, and move his limbs around while they're detached like some sort of ghost robot Ray-Ban. <laughs> Ooh! Optimus is referred to as a one percenter. That is how rare a being of his caliber is. Is that what all those people on Wall Street were protesting? Even then, many of Optimus' abilities are further enhanced thanks to his possession of one of the most powerful artifacts oh, in Cybertron's history. The Matrix of Leadership. Oh, yeah, you know, it's, I mean, it's nothing much. It's just a piece of robot god! 
The Matrix is a conduit for the power of Primus, the creator of the Transformer race. Mm. With this, Optimus can heal some of his most grievous wounds. What? Not all the time. Like, you know, when he died. And you use Magnus. the power of the Matrix to light our darkest hour. Oh, well, he has an impressive arsenal to all all time, keep man. that particular problem from coming up again. <laughs> yeah, never again. Regardless, he wields the Ion Blaster, a giant death cannon which prime one hands like a boss. This big ol' rifle fires bolts of energy strong enough to take down most Decepticons, and can even be fired into space from ground level. Even better, it never seems to run out of ammo. Ah, one can only dream. Optimus Prime also carries numerous weapons composed of Energon, a raw energy force used by Transformers to power their technology and, well, themselves. He's got a glowy Energon axe and Energon swords, perfect for slicing up robots nice. of all sizes. And I guess they'd probably work pretty good on people too. Fighting <laughs> fire with fire, I love the animation. Optimus Prime led the fight against the him up with that axe for several millennia. That's and really, the war even found its way to our That toy about Earth. to come out uh, this we've Friday. Got nothing to worry about with Optimus protecting the planet. He's tank blasts that would tear other bots apart, like when this mega refinery exploded. It could be seen from outer space. He's punched the ground so hard, the trees around him friggin' exploded. Mm -hmm. Child's play, Boomstick. He's strong enough to tip this large oil tanker, which, when compared Damn. to the real-life Seawise giants, must weigh over 700,000 tons. Wow. He's tossed a satellite into orbit and punched hard enough to crack Six Shot's chest plate. Damn. Who boasted that his armor was drawn from the compacted subatomic matter of a collapsed star. Just to yeah, let you I know, such a star right would have now. a density Bruh. of over 300 billion tons per cubic inch. While great density doesn't necessarily beget great toughness, this still means Six Shot's armor was 500 billion times more dense than osmium, the most dense natural material on Earth. Damn. You're the most dense natural material on Earth. <laughs> What'd you say? And our Robo Commander wrecked it. He's fast enough to catch up to this Decepticon space shuttle in just 23 seconds. Given the size of the Earth here and the angle of ascent, we can determine he's moving around 125,000 <laughs> miles oh, per hour. In the 80s, bro. He's bro. also a talented leader, capable of commanding a thousand battles at the same time via the Omni Globe. Like Skynet, but in a giant disco ball. He's used that crazy strength of his to punch through Megatron, who once tanked an explosion big enough to knock Cybertron out of orbit. And yeah. thanks to the weird robo magic of the Matrix, he's even defeated Unicorn. Unicron. Who's <laughs> basically a giant robot Satan who eats planets. This guy is unstoppable. Not necessarily. Optimus oh. is certainly powerful, but after all is said and done, he has one major weakness. To violate that law would destroy our honor. He's just too nice. Too yeah, nice. Yeah, he's kind of all about the whole honor and fair fighting thing, which kind of screwed him over more than once, and even gotten him killed multiple times. Plus, he killed himself once just because he accidentally broke the rules in a freaking game. Yeah. <laughs> but when his back is to the game wall and over. all hell's breaking loose, he'll fight to the end, riding the eye of the storm. One shall stand, you one shall, shall fall. <laughs> Yeah. In the year 2179, okay, humanity right has embraced the stars. Yeah. Well, mostly. Right. After a somewhat united humanity expanded across the solar system, the ideologies between those on Earth and those in space began to drift apart. A new space-noid republic, the okay. Principality of Zeon, Zeon, arose to challenge the Earth Federation. Space-noid? That like the Domino's pizza mascot, but in space? No, more like space Nazis. Oh, well, I guess it's no surprise that they started a war by gassing a populated space colony and dropping the whole thing on the planet. Man, that's messed up. But that's just how it started. For the real star of the show, some smart guys put their heads together and came up with the coolest thing they could think of. Giant fighting robots. These yes. were mobile suits, and one of Earth's nuttier Man, engineers take me had back, developed bro. a suit which would put all others to shame. This was the RX-78-2, you know got one of those otherwise Japan, known like as cool, yep. like, the Gundam. Yep, that's hard. Gundam. There have been lots of mobile suits named Gundam, but okay. this was the original granddaddy of them all. Oh, this geez. experimental mobile suit was hidden on a remote colony, 
But before its maiden voyage with the equally classified white base could begin, it was caught in a surprise Xeon attack. With just two Zaku suits, the Space Nazis wiped out almost all of the White Base's military crew. The only people left to save these secret projects were civilians, who had no idea these things even existed. Among those who rose up was a young boy named Amuro Ray. Brilliant, albeit standoffish, Amuro was actually the son of the Gundam's chief engineer, and had already stumbled upon the mech's coded blueprints. So he grabbed the owner's manual, jumped in the Gundam, and flew into the fight. Nice. Damn, not too <laughs> shabby for going off just the manual. <laughs> Amuro quickly adapted to his complex controls thanks to its learning computer system, designed so the Gundam itself can learn its pilot's limitations and compensate. Its body is made of a super durable Luna titanium alloy called Gundarium. Of right. course. Yet another fictional metal that's way better than anything in real life. <laughs> for weapons, it's got twin 60mm Vulcan guns for ears. Yep. It's got a shield that can block shots strong enough to take down warships. Yep. And a gravity hammer, a supersized flail that's rocket propelled. Whoever came up with that oh, is my goddamn yes. hero. Ooh. Same with the guy who built the ultra-destructive beam rifle. Yep. That would be the ingenious Dr. Minofsky. Thanks to him, the beam rifle is a marvelous feat of weapons engineering. Minofsky had developed a way to miniaturize the enormous megaparticle cannons found on warships without losing any power. The result is a Gundam-sized rifle that can take down entire fleets of ships all on its own. It's like having a pistol with all the power of a thousand tanks. A yeah. single shot could easily tear through a 13,000-ton Musai-class warship. Damn. Given the official stats of this ship, to tear it asunder like so would require a strike worth nearly 9,000 tons of TNT. Sure, the beam rifle only has 16 shots, but who really cares when you just need one? Last but not least, the Gundam carries two retractable beam sabers. Yep. Because you can't have space battles without mm. royalty-free lightsabers. <laughs> All these very, amazing uh, weapons difficult. would be useless without an exceptional pilot. Despite oh, still wow. technically being a civilian, Amuro oh, became the main pilot for the Gundam. Turns out his skill was mostly thanks to his previously unknown abilities. Amuro was okay. a new type. Like, uh, Pokemon? See, <laughs> apparently humankind was never meant to live under gravity's pull. In space, without it literally weighing down their souls, some humans develop psychic powers. That is the dumbest backstory for why someone gets powers. And we've heard a lot of them, Wiz. So what, he can like read minds or something? Sort of. These powers and their capabilities yeah, have little lot. definition, often deferring between different people. Most new types can instantly understand each other upon contact, even drawing kinship between sworn enemies. Amro's abilities in particular grant him something akin to precognition. He can predict exactly what will happen on the battlefield and where his enemies will be, and can capitalize on it if he reacts fast enough. How could he possibly predict I'd attack from the other side? Again. He Something shot down that. targets too fast yeah, for is. the eye to see, and navigated his friends through a collapsing fortress with no casualties. By the end of the war, his own reflexes were pushing the limits of the Gundam itself. A magnetic coating was added to the Gundam to compensate, reducing the suit's friction and increasing its speed by 27%. Over 14 years of military service, Amuro became a legendary pilot. He even learned how to use these super fast funnel guns with his uh, psycho was of powers. Speaking of speed, the Gundam is comparable to the Red Zaku piloted by Amuro's rival, Shar, which Red is three Kong. times faster than the standard green model. During the first large-scale battle with mobile suits, a Zaku flew through the battlefield in seven seconds. By comparing the 1,072-foot-long Magellan-class starships in the distance, we can tell the Zaku flew over seven miles. This puts the standard Zaku's top speed just under Mach 5. When tripled to compare to Char, this means the Gundam can move at least 11,000 miles per hour, 15 times the speed of sound. Highballing it with Amuro's new type powers and magnetic coating, it's possible the Gundam can move as fast as Mach 25 though anything over that would put it dangerously close to re-entry speeds, which its chassis cannot survive on its own. The Gundam is strong enough to lift and throw this goofy mobile suit, and there tough enough to power through a magnetic field that's 7,200 degrees Fahrenheit. It survived plenty of really big explosions, including a detonating asteroid and a nuclear blast which wrecked Amuro's home colony. I bet it could wipe out the space Nazis all on its own. It nearly did. Amuro and his Gundam were instrumental to the war effort. 
It doesn't matter how much the Gundam was burned, it would always stand up, dispel the fear, and fly. Tight, man. Yep. Tight. Gravitate, man. This is that old school writing, you know what I'm saying? That's why that scene is so Die! All right, the combatants are set. Let's end this debate once and for all. But first, <laughs> let me transform your eating habits. All right, gentlemen, before we get into this match, I want to know, you guys changing your mind? Houston, we got a problem. Go ahead. You changed your mind? No. Uh, it, it's, once again, even though he's he's enhanced and I knew that, the problem is he's still human. And if he if he doesn't react fast enough, Optimus going to get him. That psychic ability helps him act yeah, fast it, it enough, helps though. Him, yeah. though. It helps. It helps him majorly. What I'm about curious you? to the outcome. I'm gonna stick with Gundam. Gundam. And it, it, and cause I'm, it, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be honest. I'm just a little pissed that um, Michael Bay uh, made Optimus so weak in part one. <laughs> you didn't show none of these. None of, none of them feet, bro. He's gonna wreck they Megatron, bro. The legs and the, the, the jetpack. He should have. He should have like, wrecked bro. Megatron. One. Damn. Yeah, I'm man. sticking with Optimus though, man. Optimus still organic being, man. Everything is natural to him, bro. He had to learn nothing. Oh, I, mm -hmm. I, I ain't knocking that. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. yeah. it, and it's come. it's especially after it's organic. He's an organic yeah, being. He's yeah. an organic being, and all the Let's get back into it. Oh, here we go. Checking something out, say it's more than meets the eye. <laughs> <laughs> if there's trouble, yeah. we can't send back up. Let's roll. Nice. It's Here we go. I told you. I told you. Oh, you're fighting space. Oh man. Don't know if I have the upper hand on this one. Yeah. There it is. Got the <laughs> I have been in battle for countless eons. Woo! Let's go, Optimus. <laughs> what? what? Oh, man. Damn. We got a lightsaber battle. Here we go. Woo! -hoo -hoo! Optimus a G, bro. He came. Oh, yes. Uh, here we go. Yes. Let's get out of space, baby. Like it. Woo! <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. Ooh. Get your shit over there. That's not right. Dang. Oh boy, use them tires, bro. Whoa. Oh. oh. I'm just bad. I must stand, so you shall fall. Oh, that's it. Right in the cockpit. Damn, he there. That's it. Tight. KO. I was worried over there. He's got the touch. He's got the power. <laughs> the Gundam was an impressive machine, and Amro was a skilled pilot. But Optimus's millions of years of battle experience completely overshadowed yep. Amro's 14. Also, we already know that Optimus was over six times faster and 9,000 times stronger. Holy hell, who knew Optimus was so freaking buff? 
But the Not Gundam had plenty of its own advantages. <laughs> with Amuro's super future sense powers, he could keep up with Optimus's speed. And with the Gundam's firepower, who cares how much it could lift? Unfortunately, the Gundam's limited ammunition meant this couldn't last. And even then, Optimus could certainly survive a shot from the beam rifle. Remember that refinery explosion Optimus survived? The one you could see from outer space? This blast left an enormous gash on the planet Cybertron. To measure the power of this explosion, we needed to compare it to the curve of the planet. Now, Cybertron's size is pretty inconsistent throughout G1 Transformers history, but even when using the alternating sizes between the cartoon and the comics, the blast is far more destructive than the beam rifle in both cases. And Optimus just walked right out of that bitch! And so this isn't some weird outlier just out of the comics either. In the cartoon, Megatron survived a blast that pushed Cybertron out of orbit, and he's pretty comparable to Optimus. To be fair, the Gundam boasts some impressive durability feats too. Like when Amuro accidentally blew up Azaku's nuclear reactor right in his own face. Hey, give him a break, it was his first time. This explosion created a hole in the space colony which sucked out Amuro's father. Whoops! On the bright side, he's gonna save some money on Father's Day gifts, right? Oh, and with man. his heightened mind, we Bruh. deduced the scope of the <laughs> explosion. Yep. It's over 150,000 kilotons of TNT. That's 10,000 times more powerful than the bomb that dropped on Hiroshima, but still nowhere close to the refinery explosion Optimus survived. Also, the Gundam couldn't dodge Optimus's ion blaster forever. It was fast enough to strike targets in orbit from ground level. That puts its laser speed over 3 million miles per hour. Even when he knew it was coming, Amuro couldn't react quick enough to dodge or block anything that fast. And even then, Optimus's time in the Omniglobe proves he can think way faster than Amuro. And just to blow your mind even more, in order to obliterate Unicron with the Matrix, the energy output must have equaled more than <laughs> 40 Yoda tons of TNT. I've never like heard of Yoda Star tons, bro. What is that? <laughs> and you know what they say, size matters not, especially when Optimus has defeated opponents as big as Devastator. The Gundam was a powerful mobile suit with some right astonishing there. firepower, but was ultimately outmatched by the Autobot's strength, speed, durability, and experience. I'd say Optimus was primed for this fight. The winner is Optimus Prime. Oh, Sam. I knew it. Yeah, I knew it too. I knew it was gonna I mean, happen. Yeah. That organic being is that's some real stuff even, right like, there. Yeah, even as a even as a Gundam mm -hmm. fan, you know the like with the stats that Optimus boasts, mm -hmm. like you know the first generation Gundam don't stand no chance. I don't think any Gundam stand, stands a chance against Optimus. Yeah, Optimus on another level, man. Um and I, and there's some powerful that Gundam. That's a cool fight, there. yeah. He had two close calls. Yeah. I gotta say. That, but I, I I'm thinking like what the Gundams and uh, the whole different pilots like mm -hmm. is everybody like skill sets like different? They're not Every, all the same. No, they're no, not. No, no. Yeah, like because the, the that's unique. Yeah, the the new types are unique to the original run of Gundam mm -hmm. and the Universal Century. Suit. Yeah, and yeah. then you have uh, you have the uh, coordinators from Gundam Seed. Yeah, and then you just have you know so each each Gundam iteration has its own way that they do their pilots. Nice, nice. I think they were I think they were fair with the fight to be honest though. That was very fair, yeah, man. Yeah. Once, once organic they accuracy on both sides. It, it yeah. made sense. He was yeah. like, yo, he's been doing this for thousands of years, bro. Like yeah. and you just the, got the owners. You got manual. four like, yeah, you got oh, four yeah. yeah, even even Armro they said Armro at his best with fourteen years of combat experience, you ain't matching up to this couple thousand Optimus, years. Yeah, Optimus have fought problems bro yeah. but no it was cool man enjoyed it took us back to the 80s man you, you, a lot of a lot of young cats out here don't even understand how much epic it was or how epic it was in the 80s and the early 90s man just watching these cartoon shows man yep. like this you was our saturday touch. morning yeah. this, was, this was every week you got like, the power. yo like yeah. <laughs> you had something to watch like cartoons started for me as a kid at like 6 5 30 in the morning to like what 11 30 yeah, to know. Like we were yeah. just watching the tick earlier. Yes. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Watch. Like like greatness. Uh. Like yo, like big bowl cereal. Like people don't understand, man. I don't want to grow up. I'm a Toys R Us kid, man. <laughs> it, it, it's true. Like I like being grown up, you know, there's a lot of things, yeah. you know, women, mm -hmm. you know, that <laughs> When you're growing up, you know what I'm saying? With that. But, yeah, but when you grow up, you can't be a Toys R Us kid. Those you, you, are the rules. No, nah, you can. You can. You just got to find a woman that allows you to do it. 
You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm going with the song. <laughs> it's I'm like, going with the song. You're doing all right. Yeah, you know you're doing saying? all right. There's a whole arcade over there. There's, there's levels to this. And there's toys over there. Yeah. <laughs> I was going He's with the song. Right. And there's movies and games mm-hmm. over there. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, but the idea is just like, as a kid, man, you know, it was so fun, like, yeah. waking up and just being able to... You just wake up and eat cereal, bro. Like, there's a there's a box. You gotta of, keep that alive. I still eat fruity alive. pebbles, bro. Yeah. Like, regardless if my kids were here or not. I still eat cereal too. I, I don't got my favorite. The Lucky Charm, Fruity Pebbles, yeah. Sugar Smacks, bro, Honeycombs, uh uh Captain Crunch, berries. You know what I mean? Uh <laughs> honey nut Cheerios when I'm feeling grown. You know what I mean? Raisin bran. Like, you know, when I've gotta be healthy. Raisin bran's cool. You know, yeah. and fruit loops and, and frosted Ooh. flakes. Did and you ever do the uh, Cocoa Puffs Flintstone cereal? I like the Cocoa Pebbles. Yeah, I roll with it. I roll with it. it ain't nothing like having chocolate I milk in the morning. Close, but I like the Corn Pops though. I like. I, I wasn't. I was. I was never a big cereal cereal person. Never. Word. So, word. You know. Word. Tied to my stomach, man. I'm lactose. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, yo, I'll be at work. Tricks for kids, man. Silly Rabbit. rabbit. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah tricks, tricks, is co- bro. tricks is cool. You know what I mean? Golden Grams. Yep. You know. Oh yeah. Damn, man. Make Ghostbusters cereal. Man, a good old times. He used to say we had some, we had a bunch of bomb stuff when we was kids. Well, Count Chocula, right? Man, did you yeah. uh, go and get the Ecto Cool or they brought the juice boxes back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I had some orange yeah. flavors, man. You Free know what I'm saying? It was that. good. It was good. Yeah. It was good. But yeah, Gundam, man, Transformers, it's hand in hand, man. Yeah. Like with He Man and Turtles and and GI Joe and remember, remember uh, uh, the Rambo cartoon? Yes, bro. Hanna Barbera, bro. Hanna Barbera had it popping. Yeah. You know the the the, the Chuck Super Norris Friends and, and the Chuck, Chuck Norris Norris and Mr. T had a show uh, yeah. and the Chip and Chipmunks and and and, Chip and, Dale and, and, and and the Muppet Babies yeah, and Muppet. and the Gems and yeah. hey, anyway, this was hot, what this, bro. What this does tell me is I, I think we might get a crossover with this with IDW when they do stuff like this. Something's in the works. Something's in the works, yeah, I'm bro. All, I'm all right like with it. like yo like. Yeah. What was it? They they just said. Uh, I saw. I heard a rumor. I don't know if it's true that Hasbro's gonna do the fusion of He Man and the Turtles. Yeah. Like, oh, yo, bro. I'm there. Like anyway, <laughs> it's not about power. us, man. It's about it's y'all. Yeah. Post your comments down below. Let us know what y'all thought about this battle. It was lit. Optimus is tight. Gundam is tight. Yeah. It is what it is, man. Old school cartoons always. A1 in my book, man. Mac you, Warriors for life. You feel yeah. me? <laughs> if you're new to the channel, go ahead and press the subscribe button. Thumbs up this video. Don't forget to share Instagram, fa- uh, Facebook, and Twitter. And also, in the comments down below, let me know who was your favorite Transformer. Or let it alone, what was your favorite 80s cartoon show? Put in the comments down below. Let's, let's spark this up. <laughs> I'm J3. We're on the show, guys. Woo! And just says. It's your boy, C. Road to 100,000 subscribers, guys.